Terry Riken, your broker with a personal touch, proudly presents Ken Boxer Live. Hi, I'm Jamal Wilkes. You're watching Ken Boxer Live on TVSB. Did I get it right? <laughs> From the American Riviera in Santa Barbara, California, it's Ken Boxer Live, Santa Barbara's one and only entertainment talk show. Let's welcome the host of the show, Ken Boxer. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. I'm Ken Boxer, and this is Ken Boxer Live. Let me introduce you to my very talented co-host, Kate Imperio. Let's give it up for her, everybody. So, in the last few weeks, I haven't seen you. What, what have you been doing? What's new with you? I've been doing some comedy shows. Um, I'm doing a gig uh, December 18th coming up in Ventura. Um, and I, I failed to mention, people don't realize you are a comedian. I am, apparently. That's up to you, I think, right? <laughs> Very funny. I think I'm funny. So coming up this, this month, you have? Uh, December 18th uh, in Ventura Harbor Comedy Club. I'll be performing. And uh, Christmas is coming up. So I'm going to go back to New York. I'm from New York. And uh, you're my- bring, You're bringing your pet, right? Yes, my, my iguana is coming with me. And uh, I used to be able to bring him on the plane. Snakes on a plane happen. Everybody freaked out and was like, no more. So I have to FedEx overnight him. Wow. That's how he travels. Well, good luck with that. Yeah. Good luck with that. Well, tell us who's on the show tonight. Who oh, wants to know? We have an amazing guest tonight, very talented, NBA Hall of Famer, author, and financial advisor. We have Jamal Wilkes. <laughs> Thank you. Boxer Live, brought to you in part by The Eagle Inn, a family-owned hotel near the beach in Santa Barbara. Harborview Inn, welcome to Santa Barbara's premier four diamond luxury boutique oceanfront hotel. La Quinta Inn and Suites, conveniently located in downtown Santa Barbara. Now back to Ken Boxer Live. Thank you. Thanks so much, thank you. Thank you. And we are back. Tonight we have one of the most iconic American sports figures joining us. Jamal Wilkes is a four-time NBA champion, two-time national college basketball champion, and an NBA Rookie of the Year, and he's an NBA Hall of Famer. Jamal's also an author and a very, very successful businessman. Let's welcome, let's give it up everybody, Jamal Wilkes. Thank you. Thank you. It's nice having you here. Jamal, you're no stranger to Santa Barbara. No, I'm not. Uh, I went to uh, first grade uh, and 12th grade here in Santa Barbara. I moved to Santa Barbara with my family from Ohio when I was five. And uh, since I graduated high school, I keep coming back. So I'm no stranger at all. And it's really a uh, pleasure to be here with all these lovely folks in your studio this oh, evening. We're delighted to have you here. In fact, everywhere I went today in this last week and I said you were going to be on the show, everybody just said how gracious he is and down to earth and you have been. It's amazing. Well, it's nice to have you. They're probably all my PR people. <laughs> 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 when did you realize that aside from your height, when did you realize you were going to be a successful basketball player? Well, I actually loved baseball as a young boy, and I played all sports, as most young people did then. Uh, my dad liked baseball, and, but when I got to 14, I was entering high school, and the basketball coach who I met when I was eight years old, a real fine gentleman, Bob Swanson, up there in Ventura, it became obvious I was going to have to make a choice. So I didn't know, you know, that uh, things would work out anything like they did, of course, but but I knew that, uh, you know, my basketball was where my fortunes lay, you know, so. And you were an All-American in, in high school. Correct, right. yes. Now, Arthur Ashe, the famous tennis player, mm -hmm. once said that 
if you're not an All-American by high school, you might as well never think of going into the pros. Do you agree with that statement? Well, I have the ultimate, uh, ultimate respect for Arthur Ashe, but I don't agree with that statement. I think some uh, young people bloom later in life and uh, uh, you know, develop post high school. Uh, uh, so no, I don't agree with that statement. Okay, well when you were in high school and you became an All-American, you had, if I recall, 26 winning streak game winning streak, San Barbara High School, correct? Yeah, yeah we did, yeah. It was a, <laughs> we, we lost in the semifinals, but, but we had a good run, yeah. You and Don Ford. Yep, me and Don Ford. I was there. <laughs> Someone said that you, they were there <laughs> at the game in the audience. Um, if, if you can look back and say, okay, I've been very successful as a ball player. If I could have done anything else, what would you have done? That is a very interesting question. Uh, I may have been a guitar player. Really? <laughs> uh, I enjoyed that. Uh, I, I tried to teach myself in college, but basketball and school took too much time. Um, hmm, that's an interesting question. I, I, I've never really, that's a question I have not been asked. Before. Really? Yeah. It, right. I, I should tell the audience that uh, beforehand, I was going to, I told Jamal that I was going to try and think of some questions that he's never been asked. Yeah, that's one. So, but good. I wish you brought your guitar. We'd love to hear you sing. Uh, well, you don't want to hear me sing. <laughs> but uh, uh, and, and my chord and my you know playing needs some further work. I haven't done it in years, but yeah, no, I enjoy that. Yeah. Well, were you? What, what happened when you heard that you're going to be recruited by UCLA? I mean, they just had the run with. Lou Alcindor, yeah. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Yeah. Now you're going to be going to that school. Well, I watched all of that, uh, going back to Wall Hazard and, and, and Kareem, and, and uh, I tell you, it was a it was a fairy tale, quite honestly. I mean, it was uh, real flattering to be recruited by Coach Wooden at that time. Uh, yet, on the other hand, there's a huge jump between high school and college. So just because you have success in high school, that doesn't mean you'll have success in college. So I, there was always a nagging doubt, you know, whether I was good enough. Uh, and I always felt uh, I had to prove myself uh, over and over and over again. But like, again, from my earlier question, when did you start realizing that you were good? I didn't realize I was really good and could probably turn pro till uh, the end of my sophomore year in college. Uh, and the reason being, uh, the tradition at UCLA at that time was just so unbelievably awesome. And uh, we, Bill Walton, a classmate of mine, Greg Lee, and uh, we entered after the highly successful Sidney Wicks Curtis Rowe era. Right, right. And, and so here are these sophomores coming in, and, and uh, I remember Sports Illustrated wanted to do a story on us, and Coach Wood called us in his office, and you know, we were just entering our sophomore year, freshmen couldn't play varsity then. And he said, they want to do a story on you, and you know, what do you think? And you know, we, were, we looked at each other and said, yeah, we haven't done nothing yet. <laughs> you know, I mean, so we were really humbled by the experience of being at UCLA and being fortunate uh, to be part of those great, great, great players they had and the great tradition they had. And tell everybody who, that, that doesn't know how the nickname came, Smooth as Silk. Smooth as Silk. I know you've, met, you've said that a number of times, but yeah. I, our artists may not know. Well, first of all, it's a badge of honor for me, and it was better than my nickname in high school, which was Spider. <laughs> <laughs> but, I did not know that. Yeah, but I got the nickname uh, at UCLA. I was a sophomore, and uh, people used to come watch us practice every day. I mean, that was a big happening. Students, and this one student in the band engineering, straight A engineering student came, and I did a move that really excited him in practice. And so in the dorms afterward, the f we used to all eat together. And he was in that same dorm. And he came up to me and said, uh, you know, uh, uh, Silk, he just blurted it out. That move you did was smooth as Silk. And so the guys heard that and they started calling me that kind of as a tease, you know, a ruse. And then uh, the legendary Dick Enberg was just embarking on his career, and he started doing the UCLA late night broadcast. Mm -hmm. And so he heard them call me that, and he started calling me that on the air, and it just took off from there. And then Chick Hearn took well, it over. Well, of course, the legendary Chick Hearn, yes. And uh, of course, the, 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 what was it, the 20 foot layup was another. Yeah, he named it the 20 foot layup, yeah. Chick, Chick <laughs> named it the 20 foot layup. And, uh, 
I, I don't want to jump yet to the pros, but the story about John Wooden taking you aside, because you had a very unconventional type of shot. Correct. Okay, so tell this story, because it's worth repeating. It's a great story. Well, first of all, I didn't realize I was shooting any different. You know, and I, I learned to develop that shot organically as a young boy playing on the playgrounds with older guys, because I was one of the better young players, and they didn't want some wh young whippersnappers showing them up. You know, so they would block my shot every time. <laughs> they'd rough me up. They try and you know scare me away. And how tall were you about that time? I was about six feet. Okay. I was uh, about 12 years old, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> most youngsters start off shooting a sidewinder on an eight-foot basket and graduate to the nine foot hoop and then the 10 foot hoop. Well, because I was playing with older guys, I was still on the nine foot basket, but they weren't gonna play on the nine foot basket. Right. So I, I swallowed my pride and tried to stick it out. Well, for the first six months, they did block my shot every time. <laughs> And, uh, so did your sister, right? Oh, yeah. yeah she, <laughs> no way, my sister was a really good basketball player. Uh, that's what player. I heard, yeah. very much. Yeah, yeah, man, she was a really good basketball player uh, before it was popular. Uh, and and, and my, one of my biggest goals was to finally beat her, <laughs> which I did when I was like 14, 15, and we got into an ugly fight, and, <laughs> you know, the, what brothers and sisters do, you know. But, uh, but uh, getting back to my jump shot. Mm -hmm. So I learned how to just hold it back there till the last minute, and they would go up and start coming down, then I would let it go. But John Wooden was interested in talking to you about that. He was very interested. So what happened when he got you aside? Well, it was the first week of practice, and he calls me over, and again, it's like uh, he was already an, an icon. You know, you didn't want to stand out for any reason whatsoever. So he calls me over, Keith, come here. I'm like, I'm so like nervous, you know, I mean, what's he going to say to me? You know, he's, your scholarship's gone, you, you know, you're out of here, you know. He said, I want you to shoot, you know, around the key, some jump shots. And I'm thinking, okay. And he was a very thoughtful man. You know, it's like, he talks to you, he's very warm and friendly, but he's very penetrating. Mm -hmm. And uh, he says, uh, and I'm going to rebound for you. And I was stunned. John Wooden was going to rebound. Just one me. on one? Just the yeah, two. yeah, just the two of us. And I figured, you know, he'd call a team manager, an assistant coach. You know. So anyway, I shoot it. And because he's watching me, I'm making like 96%, you know, of the shots. And then he calls me back over and says, now, now, how did you shoot that? And I'm really, you know, I'm like thinking, what is this coming? Oh, and I remember every pass he made to me was perfect. I said, you know, I could play with this guy. You know? <laughs> he, was a great, he was a great basketball player in college as well. I said, well, coach, you know, I do this, I do that. And he's... He said, uh, now, how do you release that ball again? I said, well, you know, I'm this, that. He said, does it have the good reverse spin? And he rolls the ball out and it comes back to him. And I thought about it. And then by this time, I'm thinking like he's thinking. You know, I'm going. <laughs> I said, well, yeah, coach, it does. He said, okay, you're dismissed. And so years later, we laughed about it. You know, he said, thought about changing it. But my setup was, and my finish was, textbook, but what happened in between, he could look the other way as long as it went in. That's right, that's right. <laughs> yeah. um, we're going to surprise you right now, everyone in our audience, everyone at home, I want us to watch the monitor and people at home watch. We're going to, I'm going to, we didn't tell you about what we're about to show you, but a lot of people may not know this no, you didn't tell you. me about any surprise. No, I'm gonna, uh, no surprise. We're going to see. It wouldn't be Let, a surprise then. Let's, yeah, that's true. Let's that's watch true. Jamal Wilkes. No, no, Will. You're hitting it too flat with your hand. Let me show you. Okay, you got to keep it out on your fingers. See, like this. Okay, you try it. Like that, Homer? Yeah, that's better. Okay, it's me and you, one on one. Keep your back to me and guard the ball with your body. Okay, you face the basket and you be in balance. You get the ball, you put it on your fingertips. Okay. And make sure it feels good and right. take your time. Okay, it's on your fingertips and you hold it high and let it fly. Listen, I'll see you in the locker room in a few minutes. Come on, Will, get going. Mr. Wilson's gonna be here any minute. 
I think you guys better split. The hell with Mr. Wilson. What did you do with them pills, man? What pills, sir? Come on, man. You know what we're talking about? The stuff that was in the locker. I flushed it down the toilet. Hey, man, that dope was worth a lot of bread. I told your friends not to bring that stuff in here. Man, your time has come. Look, I ain't got time for this. Oh. Kid was telling me in some kind of trouble. My cousin. Well, what kind of trouble? It's all over, Mr. Wilson. Thank you. We sure don't want anything to happen to you, Nathaniel. Ain't nothing gonna happen to me, Mr. Wilson. <laughs> that college needs me too bad. Quite the treat. Well, what was really a treat about it is it was Lawrence Fishburne's first movie. <laughs> but uh, it was it was uh, it was really a lot of fun for me. That came out of nowhere. I, I didn't pursue acting. I was going to ask you, how on earth did you land this role? Well, the writer and the director were huge UCLA basketball fans, and they approached Coach Wood, and because it had so much basketball footage in the movie. They thought it'd be easier to convert an athlete to an actor <laughs> okay. rather than an actor to an athlete. But you, you enjoy it? I did. It was a great experience. I did enjoy it. Well, you were great in it. Why didn't you pursue that? You're on a parallel track. Well, you know, it was a little different then. Uh, you know, guys didn't really pursue it, but, you know, there's not a lot of parts for six, seven guys. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> So Did you have to take some stage combat classes no. for that film, or you just used your uh, your fighting skills? I used my fighting <laughs> skills, and uh, but but I had to read with the uh, writer and the and the director. We had to practice reading several times, yeah. and I had to convince them that that I could do it. And uh, fortunately, I did. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, well, let's talk now. Going into the NBA, became Rookie of the Year in a sensational season. San Francisco had never won a championship, and there you were in the spotlight. What was that like? It was so unexpected. Uh, they were picked to finish fifth in our division. Uh, coming out of UCLA, the two questions I was asked the most was, how are you going, being 190 pounds, going to survive the rigors of the NBA? And two, how are, is a guy like you, a wooden protege, John Coach Wooden protege, going to get along with a guy like Rick Barry, uh, who was a major star? But, but notoriously, what? No, notoriously critical, publicly critical of his teammates, officials, so forth and so on. So I knew Rick was a big time scorer, but I, I didn't really know him. So I kept an open mind. Uh, but we were picked to finish fifth, and it was just uh, Al Adels, our coach. It, it was just, and this, you know, I don't mean to sound cliche, but it was a magical season. Um, the Their previous first round picks before me had all been major bust. So I felt a lot of uh, pressure to uh, show I belonged. Uh, and Rick, uh, I, when I learned Rick was more critical of himself than anyone else, you know, my attitude and, and my thinking about him really changed. And I learned a lot from Rick. And we're, to this day, we're, we're very good friends. How come you don't wear the championship rings. You always see athletes wearing it. How come you don't? I love jewelry, but I don't wear it well. <laughs> okay. I, I love it on other people. And then my knuckles, I've busted several knuckles. And I want people to see the size of your hand. Put your hand against mine. Look at that. <laughs> 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 Kate? That is out of control. <laughs> um, <laughs> do, we, do we even want yeah, to let's see do this? this. <laughs> oh, boy. That's crazy. Um, Everywhere you turn, he's a champion. Definitely. I was going to ask um, if that affected your ability to be a mo motivational speaker. You know, you've been doing that, I heard, a yes, lot. Yes, I have. And yeah. uh, was, did that sort of start with your teammates, like on the team? Did you get everybody all riled up and ready to go or no, something that came later? No, I wasn't a real talker. I, I led more by example. 
Uh, but it came later. Yeah. Uh, as my confidence developed and then people were interested in the winning and, and Coach Wooden and Showtime and everything. And, and uh, then I, I learned that I could, you know, help people sharing my story. And so it became very appealing to me, you know, to do so. To help others. Yeah. Yeah, yeah to help uh, particularly young people. Definitely. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, let's talk about this book for a moment here. This is a book I'm going to show right now. We'll get a shot of that. It's a book I just started reading yesterday. And it was one of the type of books that you, and I'm not just saying this, it's hard to put down. And I'll be finishing it in the next couple of days. Tell us about the inspiration of this book. Yeah, well, a lot of my fans asked me over the years, did I have a book? When was I coming out with one? <laughs> and I, you know, I thought about it, but you know, it's a lot of work to write a book. I mean, you gotta dedicate the time and make the discipline. So it kind of started as a family legacy thing. And then I started thinking about, people kept asking me, I said, okay, I'm gonna do a book. And so the biggest challenge really was what to include and what not to include. Uh, I had some publishers want me to you know, tell dirt on people and I wasn't gonna do that to my, these are my friends, my family, you know. Right. I'm not gonna do it to myself <laughs> either. And so, but I did feel I was very fortunate and blessed to be in the golden era of basketball. Uh, and I played with and against some fabulous people and great athletes, great basketball players. And, and I thought I had a nice story for the fan. And, and then being a parent uh, of three children and, and having raised three children, I, I couldn't resist doing a little bit of grandstanding for the young people because I have a real soft spot in my heart for young people. Who would be your dream team if you could put a team together? Yeah. That I would have to think long and hard on. You know, I get asked a lot about, you know, who's better, Kareem or Bill Walton or, you know, Russell or Will or, you know, right. Bird or Magic. And, and I, my best answer is it depends on who's around them. <laughs> you know, because it is a team sport. It's not like tennis or golf where you go out and, and just do it by yourself. Uh, so they're all great players. Uh, so I would really have to think long and hard because this is on television, and if I slight anyone, I'll hear about it. So, yeah. who, aside from a coach, who made you the best player on the floor? Uh, aside from the coach? Uh, anyone that just made you a player that made you on the floor that you worked with? That they all just, did. They all yeah, did yeah, equally? They, yeah, okay. they, yeah, yeah, they all did. I mean, I, I was very, I played with great, basketball players but great people too and you know we all had uh, the undercurrents we all had the agents in our ear we all wanted the big contracts right. you know we all wanted the whatever came with the bright lights but most importantly we realized we needed each other and that you know without winning you know everything else was secondary so that's why I answered that question well, that way. Let us show a video of Jamal with the ultimate win and that is the, um, the Hall of Fame Award. We have a little bit, an excerpt from your acceptance speech. Let's watch. Okay, let's watch Jamal Wills. Thank you, Nate Smith Basketball Hall of Fame, for this moment. And I'd like to congratulate all the inductees of the class of 2012. Words cannot express how grateful and excited I am. I am so fortunate to have played with some of the greatest basketball players of all time. Bill, we had an incredible run at UCLA, and it was a privilege to play with you. Rick, you've been a mentor and friend on and off the court, and thank you so much for your support in getting me in the Hall of Fame. Kareem, one of my biggest honors was playing alongside you, the greatest scorer in the history of the NBA. Irvin, your Showtime magic was a fast break from Hollywood to Springfield. And thank you for yet another assist and thank you for making the, a difference in the lives of so many people. It is awesome to have these four men presenting me today. They, along with Hall of Fame coach John Wood at UCLA, Coach Adels at Golden State, Coach Jack McKinney and Paul Westhead, Hall of Fame coach Pat Riley, Hall of Famer Jerry West, Hall of Famer Bill Sharman, and Hall of Famer Dr. Jerry Buss, they, they have all had a hand in me standing here now. Now, I humbly invoke the name of the most revered man in the history of college basketball, John Wood. <laughs> it, 
It is therefore fitting that I conclude my remarks with a quote from Coach Wooden. Make each day your masterpiece. You can't do anything about yesterday. It's over. Tomorrow is yet to come, but tomorrow in large part is determined by what you do today. So make today a masterpiece. Thank you. Jamal Wilkes, everybody. Hey. So um, I heard that you're starting a camp, a basketball camp for adults. I am. I'm very excited about it, to get back into basketball without the pressure of winning and losing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and have fun. And uh, so it's going to be this uh, July and, uh, at UCSB, and uh, we're, we're finalizing the details now. I can't release who will be there, but they'll all be players, you know, Hall of Fame caliber players that people have admired for years. And, and our campers are going to get a good workout. We're going to work them and hard. And you'll, you'll be there, right? I I'll know a lot there, of these absolutely. stars are there for a day and then they take off, I'll but be you'll there. actually be there. Yes, sir, the whole How time. How can people find out more information? Well, you know, we haven't done our website yet, uh, so I'll have to get back to you. We are going to do a press release, though, once we right. finalize all that information. And, but the website will be the primary tool. And, you know, we only have just a few more seconds. Got to ask you this question. How is it that you're able to go through all of these, you know, college and, and the pros, all these years, and no scandals? That we know of. One of the cleanest, of. not only silk, but that you. That we know <laughs> of. That's what she said. The cleanest of silk. Well, you know what? Uh, you got about 20 seconds. 20 seconds. <laughs> 20 seconds left. <laughs> and I'm getting my... I'm certainly dry. not perfect, and, and, I, and, I, and I have my dirty laundry, but I think uh, one thing I always tried to do was keep it out of the public eye. You know, that's not what people want to hear. Um, and, and, and I think I was associated with people that felt the same way. And I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. That's it for another edition of Ken Boxer Live. So for my guests, Jamal Wilkes, and for Kate Imperio, and for our director, George Montalvo, and the entire KBL crew, I'm Ken Boxer. Good night, everybody, and thank all of you, too, so much. Thank you. Ken Boxer Live is brought to you by the following sponsors. Terry Riken, your broker with a personal touch for all your real estate needs. Palazzo Restaurant, where people don't leave hungry or thirsty. Harborview Inn, Santa Barbara's premier four diamond luxury boutique oceanfront hotel. The Eagle Inn, a family-owned hotel near the beach in Santa Barbara. And by Wendy Foster, La Quinta Inn and Suites, Taffy's Pizza, Country Catering, Meat Market and Deli. Lido's Takeout, Jack's Bagels and Bistro, Ice in Paradise, Perfect Computers, The Ken Boxer Live Musical Theme by Mr. Michael J. Leslie. From all of us at Ken Boxer Live, I'm Baron Ron Heron. Good night, everyone.